A very good evening to you and thanks for joining us tonight on BTV Major News at 6. Reaching you live from the Edo State capital, Benin City, Nigeria. My name is Olua Toy Uyidola. Let's quickly take a look at the news highlights for tonight. I am very, very humble. This guy welcome when I give me. He just make my body strong. Say walk, just start. Like this spaghetti now. Last week we buy and thirteen thousand. Two days later they increase them to fourteen thousand. From fourteen thousand to twenty thousand. But company when it day uh, Lagos, they say they never increase uh, uh, something like this. But the uh, distributor, the job they hire by themselves, by themselves every day, every day. I was caught on a Sunday morning by four o'clock. So by then the person was still communicating with me. I requested for me to keep on communicating with the person so that they can apprehend the main criminal because I'm just a driver. So then you can see. They are, they are they have become almost not useful to themselves, not to talk of being useful to the society. I thank my Okaile for this cars that give me today because I've, my mind is full of joy. Uh, they say if the person see happiness, not feel happy. I thank God for everything today, my chairman. I'm very grateful. Like what he did, I never even expect it. But to me, I pray for him for a long life, prosperity, for his wealth, and everything that he's doing in the urban communities. This can be adapted when and if and only if when Israel is recognized the right of the Palestinians to self determination, which is a fundamental human right for each and every people all around the world. Now, the Edo State Police Command has arrested 18 individuals over alleged drug cartel at Ogbelaka Street, Bidin City. Our correspondent reports that the command's commissioner of police, CP Fusho Adegoye, confirmed the arrest to newsmen. The report. The 18 arrested persons, including 12 males and 6 females, all ranging from age 17 to 39 years. The State Police Command Commissioner of Police, CP Funsho Adegboye, in an interview with newsmen, said on the 27th day of February 2024, at about 4 o'clock, operators of the CP surveillance unit led by the commander received a credible information from a reliable source that a particular house along Ogwela Cash Street, Benin City, has become a den for all manner of criminal elements who sell and trade illicit drugs, arms, and ammunition and also make plans before carrying out crimes within the Benin metropolis. Substances suspected to be Indian hemp were recovered and the suspects brought to the Edo State Police Command for discreet profiling and further interrogation and investigation. Based on very credible and actionable intelligence, swept on the ghetto and they were able to arrest these people that have shown to them. I think uh, the society we need to wake up. We do not need to harbor this kind of people. When you see them, people like this, please let them say something. It's for the good of society. Some of them you can see, they, are, they, are, they have become almost not useful to themselves, not to talk of being useful to the society. So people should desist from taking drugs, these people will be handed over to medical personnel. Our doctors, team of doctors, police doctors are working on them already to rehabilitate them. And those that are beyond our powers will be appropriately sent to where they are supposed to be. He also said that on the 25th of February 2024, the operators of the command's monitoring units who were on stop and search duty along Benin Lagos Road by Ovia River intercepted a Toyota Highlander with registration number Lagos JJJ 50HM, custom blue in color, with two persons, Ona Gabriel, 22 years, an indigenous of Benue State, and James Emmanuel, a native of Ogoja Cross River State. The two suspects are residents of Salem Buster by Chisco Motors, Lagos State. It was gathered that the suspects were statements and confessed that the vehicle was given to them by an individual who goes by the name John to deliver to a woman in Abia State, hence their arrest. They will be handed over to police operatives in Lagos State. We were found with a vehicle, these two people, please. They 
were found with a vehicle stolen all the way from Lagos and they were intercepted. The owner of the vehicle has been contacted and is quite happy. So once in a while, citizens, when you see po po uh, police doing a stop and search, it's for a purpose. That's why I call it a purposive and purposeful uh, stop and search. That is the directive of the Inspector General of Police. Not that mm -hmm. the road will be blocked entirely, but once in a while, we do it for a purpose. And one of the uh, outcomes of such a stop and search is the arrest of these two young men. Contract taking a vehicle to about to deliver to a female, a relative known as his sister, never known as a stolen vehicle. I was caught on a Sunday morning by four o'clock. So by then, the person was still communicating with me. I requested for me to keep on communicating with the person so that they can apprehend the main criminal because I'm just a driver, but I was denied that. The police has assured that the command will rid the state of all criminal elements and make it unsafe for them. Olua Toyo Yedola reporting for BTV News. APC leaders in Ovia Northeast local government area of Edo State, Prince Agedo, has on behalf of his family and friends congratulated Senator Monde Okwebulu, a.k.a. Akpako Miza, for his victory as the elected candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC governorship primary election in Edo State. In a message of congratulations, Prince Samuel Agedo said the resounding victory in the Edo State APC governorship primaries of 22nd February 2024 is a testament of Senator Opegulu's acceptability across the senatorial districts of the state. Describing the road to the success of the primary as hectic with several downs, he said his efforts and clear focus and the resulting victory crown it all. The APC leader said the successes of Senator Mondi Okwebulu in his past endeavors and businesses and his leadership style have been recognized by all and has positioned him for the task ahead. He expressed the confidence that the APC governorship candidates will bring his wealth of experience to bear in Edo State when he is elected as governor of Edo State. Prince Agedo also congratulated the indefatigable APC state leader, Comrade Senator Adams Eric Oshumule, Right Honorable Dr. Pius Odubu, Pastor Dr. Usaige Izeyamu, General Cecil Eseikagwe, retired, the State Working Committee led by Honorable Jared Tenebe and Honorable Engineer Lawrence Oka, the National Working Committee and NWC and all APC members in Edo State for a successful primary election and appealed for all to come together to deliver for the APC's September 21st, 2024 governorship election. Dr. Aswe Igodalu, candidate of the People's Democratic Party, was warmly received by supporters and party faithfuls at the Benin Airport on Wednesday upon his arrival from Abuja, where he received a certificate of return from the national leadership of the PDP. Speaking to the crowd, Dr. Igodalu assured the people of Edo State that he would provide leadership that would have their best interests at heart. BTV News' best orator completes this report. We'll bring this to you subsequently. Now, political participation amongst youths, especially with the results of the recent general election, has witnessed a gradual decline as many young people have disassociated themselves from their civic obligation, the right to vote and be voted for. Our correspondent went on a fact-finding mission to determine how social media has affected youth participation in politics. The report. Political participation refers to voluntary activities undertaken by the mass public to influence public policy either directly or by affecting the selection of persons who make policies. Youth participation in politics in Nigeria has been characterized by hot takes and opinion polls on social media with not many young people involved in the electoral process, with many not even possessing a voter's card. Speaking with the news crew, some respondents stated that the reason behind many youths' uninvolvement in politics is due to the government's inability to respond respect their franchise. This, they said, has led many young people to resort to social media to air their views instead of participating actively in politics. For me, I think social media have actually done enough, uh, done a lot for uh, the young people. Uh -huh. But in the aspect of the low turnout, it's as a result of, you know, people not having faith on our electoral 
uh, empire. You will find out that sometimes when you uh, discuss with these people, uh, young boys or young girls, they will tell you, ah, in our local palace, who won't win, go win. Even if we decide to vote, it will not have any headway. So I think that's one of the major reasons why people, uh, uh, young people are not coming out to vote. Although some of them came out, but the social media, I don't really uh, like it that way. People will say they will come out during election time because that's social media of a team. But at the end, they will not come out the way they're supposed to come out. But to my opinion, I believe that it's not everybody that says social media that they will come out social media that they will really, they will really come out. <laughs> I met a friend of mine in my area and I asked him, ah, are you not going to vote? He said, in this country, vote doesn't count. So he's not going to vote. And he said all those things that we are seeing on social media is just rants and all that. They already know whom they are going to give the ticket to. So I think that is why most people do not vote. The last time we tried made a year was for Bini. You know it's the doors now for Lucky Gate, all those kind of things. So I've listened to that fear make most people not come and say that. Based on what they go do us. Others opine that social media is a pivotal tool in pushing the narrative of a particular candidate or party and said it is important that the government of the day should listen to the voice of the people, particularly the youth, as it would bolster their interest in politics. Social media has actually affected um, um, political uh, campaign because in the sense that if you look at before, in the 90s, to campaign, it was very difficult because there, is, there was no means of communication that much. Oluwatoi Oyedola reporting for BTV News. Dr. Aswe Igodalo, candidate of the People's Democratic Party, was warmly received by his supporters and party faithfuls at the Benin Airport on Wednesday. Upon his arrival from Abuja, where he received his certificate of return from the national leadership of the PDP. Speaking to the crowd, Dr. Igor Dalo assured the people of Edo State that he would provide leadership that would have their best interests at heart. BTV News' best orator completes the report. The arrival of Dr. Aswe Igodalo, PDP governorship candidate for the September 21, 2024 Edo governorship election at the Bini Airport was graced with great jubilation, singing and dancing by party faithful supporters and admirers as he arrived with the executive governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki. Speaking to his supporters at the airport, Dr. Aswe Igodalo appreciated them, saying that their tireless support has brought him this far. He, however, was quick to point out the enormous work to be done by everyone as the party prepared for the governorship election slated for September this year. That's why it's angry now. The only thing where I want to talk now is say walk just start. From Edo South, Edo Central, Edo North, we go campaign. We go campaign. We go talk to our people. We go tell them why they must continue with PDP. We go tell them what we go do for them. And we go tell them say we go put money for everybody's pocket. We go take care school. Yes, we don't work, we go hospital. Yes, we go get road and God will bless us. The jubilant youth could not help but kept singing and chanting the praises of Dr. Aswe Igodalo as he expressed the belief that he will succeed Governor Godwin Obaseki. Dr. Aswe Igodalo made his gratitude known for the grand reception he received and further reestated the need for all hands to be on deck for a massive campaign and that he was dedicated to ensuring that his administration when elected as governor of Edo State will be profitable to all. Make we move forward and by God's grace we go win well, well. And then everybody go see how better state they be. The party members are hopeful that Dr. Aswe Godalo will continue the good work begun by Governor Godwin Obaseki when he's elected in September this year and eventually sworn in on November 12, 2024. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. As the price of stable foods like noodles and beverages continues to rise, many Nigerian families are struggling to afford even the most basic necessities. 
Sellers of these items have reported a sharp decline in sales as people simply cannot afford to spend what they used to on everyday items. BTV News Gifts White Boy has the report. A visit to sellers of food items in the popular Mission Road in Benin City revealed that there is a significant hike in prices of staple food items like noodles and beverages, and this is sometimes caused by the distributors. They argue that the distributors are taking advantage of the economic crisis to make more profit, and this, they say, is having a devastating impact on consumers. While some sellers blamed the distributors for the rising prices, others pointed to the high exchange rate of the dollar as a major fact. The value of Naira has been declining in recent months, making imported goods more expensive. This has had a knock-on effect on the prices of food items like noodles and beverages. Every day now, now they put money, every day. Nobody say one day, but company, when they day uh, Lagos, they say they never increase uh, uh, something like this. But the uh, distributor, the job they hire by their self, by their self, every day, every day. It's supposed not to be like that. Uh -huh. As a company never hire. Uh, uh, why the opportunity to be hiring every, every day, every day? It's not fair. So you call distributor how the call call the hire every day. We never hire for company. To start from, oh, I don't just know where to start from. The way things they go up now, you buy today, you go back again, you still add money. So I don't know, I don't know which market will go by. Distributor will still carry and come for for here. Who would they happy say them take their moto to bring them? But at last we we'll still find it difficult. If in a dollar, every day say dollar go up, dollar go up, dollar go up. If you want come out, you go come out small thing. Small thing, don't still go up again. So things still remain where it is. there. Like this spaghetti now. Last week we we'll buy and thirteen thousand. Two days later they increased them to fourteen thousand. From 14,000 to 20,000, the increment is much. This is Indomie, this is Papa. When they say Indomie, it's Papa before 8,000, 8,004, 8,005. Overnight, they increase them to 12,000. From 12,000 to 18,000 now. Papa is going to increase two times a day. Get the way they increase the in, uh, spot pack two times. They increase that in the morning. They have to they change the price again to 18,000. And now people know they buy again. People say they eat their yeah, indomie. They also complain about the decline in sales, which has been a major concern for sellers who say that people simply cannot afford to buy the product at the current prices. With many already struggling to make ends meet, the high cost of staple food has made it impossible for many to purchase these basic goods. For instance, a carton of super pack noodles initially sold for 8,400 naira is now sold for 18. In Domitable, initially sold for 5,600 naira, it's now going for 12,000 naira. The inflation on the sales is too much, so we cannot afford it at all. Indomie, which are the noodles, everything up to pure water, sachet water. Even this pen I'm holding, 150 naira. Before, we buy it 20 naira. I'm even asking her to give me 300, she said no. It's too much, we are suffering. It's too much. They should do something about it. It don't mean another. You know why increase? Why only go ahead with some of them? If it's good, now can fifteen naira, can seventeen naira. It is why I say we make can't be full. Now because of this way they die now. People, people they hungry where where? No food. Some people go to thief because of say they don't see food eat. One one man thief uh, six cup of rice that day. They beat the man, they kill him. So because of all this one, now because of hardship, now it make come. So may they try, may they help Nigeria. May they help those state too. Speaking with the consumers, they complain that they have not been able to afford these basic food items due to the hike in the prices and economic hardship. They may government look into this matter for us. May they look into it. May government help us. Now they will tell you the team may come down. They tell us before they send a fuel, they come out so city. From so city they enter dollar. But every day they high, they high, they high. You know what the person do. No government help us. They urge the government to take action to address the economic crisis and that without government intervention, they fear that the situation might even get worse. Gifts Uwagboy reporting for BTV News. The high cost of living caused mainly by the devaluation of the Naira and the high cost of transportation has made many citizens to start looking inward and also devise strategies to cope as many believe complaining will not create a lasting solution. The report. Many 
citizens are of the view that it will be a disaster for one to rely on a single source of income amid the constant surge in price of products, adding that the perilous times have made Nigerians to start thinking out of the box. Some of the people who spoke to BTV News noted that times have changed, admonishing Nigerians to either learn a trade or invest in a profitable business. They stated that it is not wise to rely solely on a stream of income, encouraging Nigerians to have multiple streams of income as the only way to cushion the effect of inflation. What will people do? It's either you invest in a business or you learn a trade, mechanic, electrician, or whatever. Huh? So every area, like I said, is saturated. Saturated. As it is today in Nigeria, how many people? Are actually building houses. How many people are buying cars? Eh? That maybe as a mechanic you are in a place waiting for customers to come. Eh? I think every individual needs to be hardworking now. Not just doing a particular job. If you want to do a particular job to survive, there is no way one can survive with such money in this country. You need to do more like me. I do, I'm a pastor. I just block work and I do some other things in addition just to make sure I'll be able to put food on the table. So at the current situation with the way things is going now, every man needs to be prayerful, one. Then two, also concentrate on how the job you will do that can provide your daily need. We are not talking of monthly need now. Your daily need so that you can feed your family. It was the grace of God that make me to easily or even survive in this country that is very hard, hard or cumbersome. The adage goes that you sew your coat according to your size or according to the cloth available. When things are going uh, haywire, like the prices of things are skyrocketing, I think it is very necessary for the individuals to now reorganize him or herself. Whatever thing you are getting, if you were taking a cup of rice before as an individual alone, then the tea called down. May they help us break them the ability called down because we they suffer for market and be small. In the beginning of this hardship, we all know it was the first subsidy they removed. Then price of fuel and uh, this will begin to increase. And with that, everything must increase. The thing where we go back government, may they try. We get the finally for this country. We're not supposed to be saying that outside the big fair for us. Make them repair our refinery. Make it work so that the price of fuel will come down. As, it, as soon as the price of fuel comes down, everything will eventually come down. Others who spoke suggested that one can thrive in these perilous times by working hard and also by learning how to be more prudent in spending. They, however, appealed to the government to reduce the cost of transportation and strengthen the NERA, as this will also help the masses in these hard times. Some Nigerians, however, admonished the people to stay strong by not allowing hardship to make them sink into depression, but they should rather seek solace in God, said Opiaifo, reporting for BTV News. The Okaigele of Obayati community, Comrade George Osabue Unwagu, has displayed a spirit of magnanimity and uncommon generosity by gifting six cars to the Odiowe of the community and other local community leaders in a bid to give back to the community, thereby promoting development and prosperity amongst its leaders at the grassroots. BTV News Best Orator brings more details of this story. The people of Obaiti community located in Ikbubaha, local government area of Edo State, have witnessed lots of development, especially during the tenure of the Okaigele, Comrade George Usabohi Onwango, as the community land have been well harnessed in constructing roads, markets, and other essential amenities. Speaking at a community gathering at the town hall, where the community head and leaders were gifted cars, some members of Obaiti community commended Ambassador George Usabohi Onwango for his annual development strides, which they have been benefited from. He has been obeying and he should continue like that. He doesn't disobey. Anything you tell him, 
you take it. Even though it's annoying, you want you, you advise him this is what we want, and he does, he does. That is what he does. So we thank him for that. I'm very grateful. Like what he did, I never even expect it. But to me, I pray for him for a long life. Prosperities for his work and everything that he's doing in urban communities. Mr. Saboye of Wango thereafter presented a set of six exotic cars to the Odion Way of Obaiting community and five other community leaders and said that they rightly deserve the gifts as they work hard on behalf of the people. I try to see how I can make my elders happy because where they are going is more closer than where I am going. So if they cannot be happy during this time that they are alive, is it when they are no more again that I can make them happy? So that is the main reason why I decided to say, okay, let me do this. These cars are cars that I can put in my car, put in my car and I sell it and make money for myself. But it, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's the right thing. So I just decided to say, okay, let our fathers have this car so that at the end of the day, their blessings will always be upon us. As far as our women is concerned, so I have set aside 500,000 naira for them so that they can use it to empower themselves as far as our market is concerned. So we cannot just wait for government to come and do. So we can still do it. The beneficiaries of the car gifts thank Ambassador George Sabohi Onwango, the Okaihele of the community, for remembering them and pray to God to grant him more blessings and wisdom to develop the community. I thank my Okaihele for these cars that give me today because I've, my mind is full of joy. Uh, they say if the best is see happiness, not feel happy. I thank God for everything today. My chairman, I thank you. Okay, I'm you very grateful. I will continue to serve the community with all my full heart. May God bless Okagile and the Council of Elder for Biotic Community. Uh, I, on behalf of my father, my brothers and sisters, we are grateful to the Okagile of Obaiti Community. Uh, for this his effort he promised and he delivered so we are we are grateful for what he has done apart from gifting cars to the leaders of the community ambassador george saboyon huango also gave the sum of 500,000 naira to the women for empowerment as a way to support them in this harsh economy best orator reporting for btv news the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, on Wednesday said the importation of premium motor spirits, popularly called petrol, into Nigeria has reduced by 50% since the withdrawal of subsidy on the commodity. BTV News Best Orator reports that the Minister stated this during the third edition of the Ministerial Press Briefing in Abuja. During his inauguration speech on May 29, 2023, President Bola Tinibu declared that fear subsidy was gone. Fear subsidy is gone. Subsidy can no longer justify it ever increasing cost and the wake of drying resources. We shall instead the channel no for the fund to better investment and public infrastructure, education, health care and jobs that we materially through life for people. Within 24 hours after that declaration, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Nigerian sole importer of PMS, withdrew subsidy on petrol. This led to a jump in the price of commodity from about 198 naira per litre to over 500 naira per litre as it later moved to over 600 naira per litre and currently sells for between 620 and 700 naira per litre depending on the area of purchase. Speaking at the third edition of the Ministerial Press Briefing Series in Abuja on Wednesday, where the Coordinating Minister for Health and Social Welfare addressed journalists, Idris stated that subsidy removal had led to the reduction of fear imports by 50%.
on February 18, 2023, about three months before PMS subsidy was removed by President Bola Tinubu, the Group Chief Executive Officer NNPCL Mele Kiari revealed that Nigeria was consuming about 66 million liters of PMS daily. Kiari also stated that over 400 billion naira was spent monthly to subsidize PMS at that time, stressing that the subsidy was having adverse impacts on the cash flow of the NNPCL. NNPCL is the sole importer of petrol into Nigeria and has continued to play this role for several years running, bearing the huge cost of fuel subsidy. Other private oil marketers stopped importing petrol into Nigeria due to the difficulty encountered in assessing the dollars required for the imports of PMAs. Going by the latest position of the information minister that petrol importation has dropped by 50%, it implies that the volume of imports into Nigeria has reduced by about 33 million liters daily based on NNPCL's figures in February. This means that PMS importation has dropped by about 990 million liters in one month. The revelation by the information minister might not be far from the truth because oil marketers have stated several times that the purchase of petrol has reduced drastically. The National President, Natural Oil and Gas Supplier Association of Nigeria, Bennett Kore, said the consumption of petrol has dropped to the lowest level ever. Filling stations are shutting down because there is no business anymore. Also on Wednesday, the NNPCL and the Organization of the oil exporting countries pledge to work together to achieve the Nigerians' aspirations to attract investments and growth production. The two organizations came to this accord when the Secretary General of OPEC paid a courtesy visit to the Group Chief Executive Officer NNPC Mele Kiari and the NNPC TARS in Abuja. Speaking at the event, the Secretary stated that OPEC was completely aligned with NNPCL's vision as captured in its payoff line, Energy for Today, Energy for Tomorrow. This, he said, was because of the OFM's inclusive view of energy as opposed to the view of being pushed in some quarters that some sources of energy were bad. He disclosed that in spite of the pushback on oil and gas, the world would require about $14 trillion investment from now until 2035 to be able to meet global demand and urge NNPCL to do everything to tap into that opportunity to raise its production. In his remark, Kiari said NNPCL was working very had to recover lost production and provide the right fiscal environment to attract investment. He expressed appreciation to OPEC for its support in Nigeria, adding that NNPCL will continue to support the organization in whatever way it could. Meanwhile, at the briefing series by the Information Minister, which was initiated to provide a platform for public officials to reel out the achievements and appraise Nigerians of the challenges of governance, it was said Nigeria had begun to reap the benefits of the reform being spearheaded by President Bolatinibu. He said that the Nigerian gross domestic product grew by 3.46% in the first quarter of 2023, as against 2.54% recorded in the third quarter of 2023. He also said capital importation rose to 66 in the fourth quarter of 2023, reversing a 36 percent decline in the third quarter. Idris noted that President Tinubu has also given a directive for the design of a social security unemployment program to cater for the unemployed graduates. Mr. President has committed to doing all that can be done to assist in purchase, giving purchasing power to the less well off, to the poorest. And in that line, he has committed and instructed that the social security unemployment, uh, unemployment um, program be devised, particularly to cater for the youth, for the unemployed graduates, as well as um, uh, the society as a whole. So we have coming in the nearest future an unemployment benefit for the young unemployed in particular. He said this is in addition to setting up a social consumer credit scheme to boost the purchasing power of Nigerians as they meet adjustments in view of the temporary economic hardship. He said the government rejects the National Social Investment Program, the direct payment of 25,000 Naira to 15 million households will resume immediately. The minister said the government is equally tackling insecurity headlock and more success stories are coming in on a daily basis. He said without any doubt, the country will win the war against insecurity. Best Orator, reporting for BTV News.
The implementation of the Stephen Oron Saie reports by the President Bola Ahmed Tunubu led administration has sparked reaction among stakeholders and citizens. The implementation of the report is said to bring about the merging of several ministries and government parastatals towards curtailing the cost of governance. A respondent who spoke with BTV News crew stated that the decision is a light in the right direction. However, more investigations should be carried out in order to meet with the current rates. BTV News' Tosin Toluanoju has the details. Submitted in 2012, the Oran Sire report on public sector reforms revealed that there were 541 statutory and non statutory federal government parastatals, commissions, and agencies. A year earlier, then President Goodluck Jonathan had set up the Presidential Committee on Restructuring and Rationalization of Federal Government Parastatals, Commissions, and Agencies under the leadership of former head of civil service Stephen Oran Sire. The report recommended that 263 of the status three agencies be slashed to 161, 38 agencies be scrapped, 52 be merged, and 14 be reverted to departments in various ministries. Twelve years after the Stephen O'Ron Sire report, the federal government on Monday approved the implementation of its recommendations to reduce the cost of governance. Speaking with BTV News, a respondent while allowed in the initiative stated that it has the potential to reduce bureaucratic orders and it has efficiency in governance. It will reduce the cost of governance because most of this ministry, they are doing the same thing. They merging them together will reduce cost and it will be speeding in their in their work. When you have a duplication of uh, offices, functions, government will be spending too much money on carrying out such functions. But when you merge them together, I believe then they will be doing the, the job to be done will not be directed towards one direction. So we, we need to minimize the cost of governance, the cost of administration. So it will go a long way in ensuring that such is attained or achieved. And it will create room for efficiency. Because what we have been having in this country, a lot of, you know, uh, activities are being carried out without accountability, without efficiency. Uh, it's not taking the nation anywhere. But when there is efficiency, there is uh, accountability, you'll be able to plan, you'll be able to account for what is uh, uh, spent and then the nation will move forward. Another respondent expressed concerns about the age of the report, alighting that it is over 12 years old and may not accurately reflect current realities. He questioned whether it can effectively serve its intended purpose and suggested conducting further investigations to ensure proper implementation. When that, when that Rosa's report came up, I think I, I, if I could remember very well, there are certain things that come up which is very good. But I think Nigeria has gone beyond that report. You have to look at what the senators are earning, what the governors. And even before that report came up, some of these governors had to pass a pension for them to be, uh, for them to be paid life pensions. So you have to look at these things. Some House of Assembly members are also following that queue too. So you ask yourself, you now, you now, you now have to understand that Nigeria has gone beyond that report and realize from cutting costs of running government that it be channeled into developmental projects for the people that the people will see and appraise and be happy with. That's all um, I have to say. As for the government, I believe that they should also have a listening ear to the people. People's plight, let them listen and let them adjust. The other concerns around it, like the one of um, possible loss of jobs, like the one where um, some of the associations or some of the, the agencies might not be so, so effective on specific issues, right? And, but overall, I think that it's a step in the right direction. And I want to um, recommend that subsequently, whenever we're having um, in-depth um, research or in-depth investigations or uh, proposals to the government. They should be done in a timely manner and the execution also should be done as soon as possible to allow for the effective implementation and the results 
to, to be something that influences all Nigerians positively. They added that the imperative to reduce governor's cost cannot be overstated and implementing the Oran Sire report is just one of several steps that can be taken. They suggested that the government should take a holistic approach examining every sector for potential cost-saving measures. This could include healthcare, government entourages, education, infrastructure, defense, and agriculture. Furthermore, they emphasized that funds generated should be allocated towards developmental projects across the country. To sing to Lua Loju. Reporting for BTV News. Mindful that some laws of the maritime regulatory agencies have become outdated, especially as they are now under the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy. The House of Representatives Committee on Maritime Safety, Education and Administration has assured a speedy review of the relevant legal instruments and acts. This followed presentations at a workshop hosted in Lagos over the weekend by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the MASA, to sensitize the legislators on the prospects and challenges facing the full harnessing of the potentials of the blue economy. The report is presented by Gifts Uwagboy. The workshop with the theme Harnessing Nations Blue Economy, a legislative approach, was attended by House of Representatives Committee on Maritime Safety, Education and Administration, Nimasa Executive, Legal Luminaries, and other top government officials. In a presentation, the lead speaker, Mrs. Jean Chiazo Anishere, tagged the National Assembly with the creation of a blue economy framework to guide the harnessing of the blue economy potentials. According to the maritime lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, SAN, the Cabotage Act, Nimasa Act, and fisheries and aquaculture regulation, among others, are obsolete and require review for the agencies to function under the new ministry. First, we we'll look at the Cabotage Act. The Cabotage Act 2003 was meant to enhance Nigerian ship owners to participate in the industry. The policy is good in terms of empowerment of the indigenous um, operators, uh, ship owners, but then there is an embargo of some sort to that policy. How do we harness the blue economy regulation as it relates to the Cabotage Act? The Director General NIMASA, Dr. Bashi Jamo, briefed those present on the current effort of the NIMASA and how the agency has recorded zero piracy in the last two years. To improve on the knowledge of the legislators, to understand their basic, uh, basic role in the society. We have reached a milestone that not only in Nigeria, internationally, we have been recognized and appreciated. In the, uh, my presentation, I have given you the accolades we have been receiving from America, from uh, uh, international maritime organizations, and so many places like that. But that's not enough. We must maintain the tempo. And the cost of managing insecurity is much, much higher than managing security itself. Impressed with the paper presentation on the team, harnessing the nation's blue economy, a legislative approach, leader of the team and deputy chairman of the committee, Uduag Odudo, assured Nigerians that they shall go back home and do the needful. He commended the Nimasa DG for his deep knowledge of the blue economy, adding that they would ensure that every allocation the agency needs is provided for them to deliver on their core mandate. I want to go back home here and assure Nigerians with the caliber of members we have in the committee and by extension the entire National Assembly because those laws, when they are amended and finally signed by Mr. President, it will go a long way to improve the economic situation of this country, especially in the area of the blue economy. And so I want to assure us as a committee, we've come, we've seen, and we will go back home. Gifts Uwagboy reporting for BTV News. Today, 29 February 2024, marks almost three days since Ms. Osareme Angel Patience Asse began the attempt for world's longest hour in reading. Prior to now, she had already embarked on a 54-hour test run. BTV News crew were at the Edo State Library premises, the venue of the readathon, to see how far she had gone. The report. 21, 
Miss Patience Osarime Angel Asse has continued her attempt on reaching the world's longest time of reading aloud. Speaking to BTV News, some people who had come to cheer her on stated their admiration on embarking on such a feat and lauded her for her bravery, expressing their elation on bringing such a thing to the state of Edo. I'm very happy that this is happening in Edo State. Yes, again, what happened in Lagos? Cooking, food is not everything. Reading. This is very good. I know it's not really easy reading because it has to do with your emotion, you know, your psychology, everything is involved. Even physically, you've been drained out. But when you are determined, you can always do it because I did such. Although I wasn't opportune to do something like this, now that she's opportune, I thank God for her. And I pray that more children should be able to come back, you know, to do something like this again. We as an indigenous and Edo people, we are all proud of her because uh, is first of its kind in our state. Here we are. Uh, to God be His glory. It has been a a good day. It has been a good day. The government are involved, individual, everybody. In fact, the celebrity. Few days ago, we are having the lives of that Saint Pocupant, who also came to show their support, and we are still expecting more of them. We have seen a decline in the reading culture of our youths because some other things have taken their attention. In Edo State, we are quite familiar with what is going on. And so we're using this Guinness World attempt to change that narrative that an Edo girl can read. A Edo girl is interested in literacy. An Edo girl is interested in promoting the girl child. An Edo girl is saying no to irregular migration and human trafficking. And she's also saying yes to safe migration. Others noted that Osiris' attempt to break the Guinness World Record has changed the negative perception on female indigents of Edo State, thereby changing the narrative and inspiring the younger generation to invest in the culture of reading. I'm super inspired because I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this because I would be scared. So, which is why I'm mostly proud of her courage. She is super courageous. She's brave. I can't lie. She's brave, and that's why I'm rooting for her fully. It's not only because she's an Edo person, but just because of her bravery. When I checked the index of Edo State, Edo State happens to be one of the states that has, um, when it comes to educational ranking, they are, I think, they are the top one currently. Yeah. So, and this is just evidence to show that the normal average uh, Edo woman or an Edo girl is an educated woman, not the other side of what, <laughs> you know, because of this media, I don't want to start saying that. We were, we, I, I think we'll, we'll see what happened over time when arguments like that. So, but it's all good. But this is also a lesson to other um, Edo like out there. Because most times the image that they portray about their state is wrong. Miss Patience Osarime Angel Asse has six more days to go. Oluwatoe Oyedola reporting for BTV News. As the Palestinian Prime Minister announced the resignation of his government on Monday, paving the way for a shakeup in the Palestinian Authority, which the U.S. hopes will eventually take on a role in post-war Gaza, as all seeks for a peaceful resolution for Gaza conflict. The Palestinian envoy to Nigeria, Abdul al Shawesh, has called on the Israelis and international community to support the process by accepting the 181 resolutions. BTV News' Angela Ilegoma reports. As the Gaza conflict seems to be reaching its end, with Palestinian and Israelis reaching a ceasefire truce and exchange of hostage, the Palestinian ambassador to Nigeria, Adullah Shawish, says all actors must recognize the international treaties and binding all. To release uh, many of the Palestinian political prisoners and the Israeli hostages uh, on the hands of Hamas. This can be achieved only if and only if we agree, all of us, all of the international community stand to uphold the international law. He called on Israel to recognize Palestinian people's rights to self-determination and existence as a potential for peace in the region. This can be adopted when and if and only if when Israel recognizes the right of the Palestinians to self-determination which is a fundamental human right for each and every people all around the world.
As the Palestinian authorities and the U.S. all seek for a peaceful resolution of the Gaza conflict, many obstacles remain, but it's hope a peaceful region will achieve. Angela Ilegoma reporting for BTV News. You're still watching BTV Major News at 6. We're taking a break now. Please stay. Yes. Original no be fancy. For quality pencil. Now EDS. For quality pencil. Now EDS. For emotion. Super satin. Super motto. Gravitas penty day. Texture penty day. And the high quality emotion. Now for EDS. You know go for the Now for EDS. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Bidin Sapley Road by Ogege Quarters, Bidin City, or our branch office, 68 Sapley Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 090-5320-6873. EDS Quality Paints, keeping your goals live. Yes. Thank you for staying. Now, on to business. Two senior executives of Binance, a cryptocurrency exchange, have reportedly been detained by the Nigerian government following the recent ban on their website. The arrests are part of a broader effort to curb speculation on the Naira, resulting in a $1.5 trillion loss in the stock market due to a significant increase in the monetary policy rate, MPR. BTV News Millicent Agagwa has details of this and more from the business world. The government has taken various measures, including blocking online platforms and investigating cryptocurrency exchanges at means consign of illicit flows. Governor Olayemi Kadosu highlighted challenges <coughs> in identifying $26 billion passing through Binance Nigeria in the last year alone. The Securities and Exchange Commission declared Binance Nigeria Limited illegal in June 2023. Presidential spokesman Bayo Onaugwa warned of Binance potentially harming the economy and urged reliance on the official platform provided by the central bank to stabilize the exchange rate and normalize prices. Kasina State's government has officially endorsed the Alternative Bank's mission to, to foster rural economies through innovative financial solutions, marking a significant milestone as the bank launches its first branch in the state. Governor Diko Rada expresses confidence in the bank's success, emphasizing the government's commitment to enhancing the growth of rural communities. The MI of Kasina, Dr. Adu Moni Usman, and Hajai Fatima Rada, the governor's wife, also shows support envisioning a harmonious relationship between the bank and the Kasina community. Alaji Gabra Muhammad, the executive director of the Alternative Bank, reaffirms the institution's dedication to financial empowerment for all customers, irrespective of their status. The NGX market capitalization dropped from 55.810 trillion to 54.317 trillion as the NGX All Share Index fell by a 2.7%. The market reached swiftly to the 4% MPR increase, with analysts linking the bearish trend to sell-off and profit-taking in response to Governor Yemi Kadoso's anticipated policy shift signaled since November 2023 had missed inflation at a 28-year high and a narrow depreciation of almost 70% against the dollar in 2024. And that's it on Business News tonight. Millicent Agagba reporting for BTV News. Now let's join our correspondent for more on the global news. More than 100 Palestinians are reported to have been killed while waiting for aid to be delivered in northern Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry blamed Israeli forces and Palestinian media cited medical sources saying Israeli troops fired at the crowd. An Israeli military source said troops opened fire as they believed soldiers were endangered. An Israel Defense Force statement also said dozens were killed, being trampled and run over by trucks. A journalist in Gaza City told the BBC that Israeli tanks fired on the crowd who had come to get supplies. The Israeli military says it has no knowledge of shelling in the area and that the incident is under review. 
An opposition leader in Chad has been killed during a shootout with security forces, officials say. Yaya Delil's death comes after the government blamed him for a deadly attack on the country's security agency. He denied the accusation. On Wednesday, heavy gunfire was heard near his party's headquarters in the capital, Najamena. Dr. Dillo is a vocal opponent of his cousin, President Mohamed Debe, who has been in power since 2021. Mr. Debe succeeded his father, who was killed by rebels, after three decades in power. The unrest in the Central African country follows the announcement that presidential elections will be held on 6th May. These elections are intended to return the country to constitutional rule. Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned Western countries against sending troops to Ukraine. The consequences of such decision would be tragic, he said. In his annual State of the Nation address, President Putin accused the West of trying to drag Russia into an arms race. At the same time, he said that Russia needed to strengthen its defenses on its western border now that Sweden and Finland were joining NATO. President Putin said the West provokes the conflict in Ukraine and continues to lie without any embarrassment, saying that Russia allegedly intends to attack Europe. Cuba's government has, for the first time, asked the UN's food program for help as food shortages on the communist-run island worsen. The World Food Program, WFP, said it had received an unprecedented official request from the Cuban government for help providing powdered milk to children under seven years of age. The request is a sign of the seriousness of Cuba's economic crisis, as well as a shortage of milk, fuel, and medicines are also running low. The WFP confirmed to Spanish News Agency that it had been approached by the Cuban government to continue the monthly delivery of 1 kg, 35 ounces of milk for girls and boys under the age of 7 throughout the country. And that is the global segment for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I am Olua Tsoin Oyedola. On entertainment. The councillor of Boston City declares March 2nd, 2024, as a day set aside to celebrate Burner Boy for his outstanding performance and advocacy work. They therefore stated that it is as a result of his cultural diversity, extraordinary talent, and hope to encourage him in his endeavor, along with other individuals who hope to be in the limelight. Let's join BTV News' Angela Ileguma for more on entertainment. The city of Bristol in Massachusetts, United States, has declared March 2nd as Bonner Boys Day in honor of the Nigeria singer. This was contained in a document of the Bristol City Council signed by Councillor Ruth C. Louis Jenning. According to the document, Bonner Boy was honored in recognition of his performance and advocacy works. The document contains an inter alia Bristol commitment recognizing and celebrating culture and diversity is evidence in the range of cultural events, festival, and community initiative that showcase the city's multicultural landscapes. Whereas Bonner Boy's legacy serves as a reminder of possibilities and reminding people to continue amplifying voices that have long been silenced or overlooked. Bonner Boy has had so many sold out shows in Bristol since breaking into the international scene in 2018, resulting to this great honor. Nigeria singer has revealed plans to join the movie industry this year. He said he took the bold step because he had always received Receive compliment to being very dramatic. The singer said he had showcased a bit of his acting skills in some of his music videos, but is now set to make his major acting debut this year. Speaking in a recent interview with Billboard News, Fireboy also said he would be releasing an album this year. In his statement, he said, I'm excited to share with my fans that I'm releasing an album this year, also announcing his decision to join the movie industry, while making emphasis of not willing to let go of his gifts of acting. The South Africa police have detained six individuals linked to the high-profile mothers of renounced rapper Kaina Phoebs, popularly known as AKA, and his close associate celebrity chef and entrepreneur Tebelu Tibbs Motshone. The tragic incident occurred on February 10, 2023, when the duo was fatally shot outside a popular Tuband restaurant just hours before AKA was scheduled to perform at a nearby club. AKA, who in initially gained fame as a member of the rap group Entity before launching a successful solo career, was a celebrated figure in the South African music scene and beyond. The arrest come after intensive investigations into the circumstances surrounding the killing, which have now been revealed 
involve a targeted attack. South Africa Police Minister Becky Sele confirmed that the murder captured on closed circuit television CCTV cameras had profoundly shocked the nation, already grappling with one of the world's highest murder rates. Sele expressed hope that the arrest would provide some solace to South Africa and contribute to a sense of justice for the victims and their family. The suspects are scheduled to appear in court where they will face charges related to the murder of AKA and Tips. And that is it on Entertainment News Tonight. I'm Angela Ilegoma reporting for BTV News. With that, we've come to the end of the News Bulletin for tonight. It was a pleasure to have you on board with us. My name is Oluwatoe Oyidola. Have a good night.